I'm going to start this video with a quick warranty update before showing you what I've been up to this week. For now, we've paused the warranty repair clock. Trent is in communications with Leopard Catamarans regarding organizing the next phase of repairs on Liger. And I can confirm that we should see new people coming out to the boat soon who Leopard have vouched for in terms of their skill, work ethic and professionalism. In the meantime, Leopard has requested that we not undertake any warranty work or warranty repairs on the boat, which we've accepted and have instead turned our attention to other projects on the boat that have been sitting to the side waiting for us to have some time to do them, including the work that I'm about to show you and creating a helpful video on how to service your SD60 sail drive output seals. So you can keep an eye out, that video is going to drop in the next few days and will definitely be helpful if you have a Yanmar SD60 sail drive or you might just like to watch it if you like watching us work. We are still in negotiations with Leopard and Travelopia on the overall outcome to this situation. They have recognized that the vast quantity of issues and poor workmanship on our single hull is rare and abnormal which is why they've stepped outside their usual procedure to facilitate the warranty repairs. In regards to Robertson and Kane, we have not spoken to them recently and there's not been a response to our video discussing who should be responsible for paying for warranty costs, whether it should be the broker, the builder, or a combination of both, with my opinion being the boat builder. Um, the lack of a response, probably not that surprising to me. Here in Trinidad, life goes on, and like I said, we are working on different boat projects. The hurricane season is now just a few weeks away, and boats are hauling at all the yards every day, including our first fellow Leopard 45. We've heard there are at least five new Leopard 45s coming to Trinidad for this hurricane season, and we plan to volunteer to survey all of them. Just joking! <laughs> Owning a boat that's headed for remote area cruising grounds, you have to learn to be pretty self-sufficient. And then add to that the shipbuilding qualification that I feel we've just about earned through this warranty process. And the end result is we have a whole lot of skills that we never had in our previous life. I can sew canvas and flags, help with fiberglass repairs, splice ropes and make soft shackles. But something I wasn't so familiar with was gel coat. While Leopard Catamarans remain committed to organizing the repairs of Liger, I decided it would be a good idea to learn how to finish gel coat so that I can do some of our projects now and in the future. But where to learn how to finish gel coat? Now, like any millennial, I went to my first port of call when I want to learn anything, YouTube. I sat down, watched a YouTube video, gained a whole lot of confidence, and keeping in mind the things that I had learned from Nino, who was a very talented finisher who has been at Liger previously, I set out on my first task, trying to just flatten a bump of gel coat. This is the area I'm gonna be practicing on. And I kind of feel like I wanna take this big one on, like straight off the bat. Tynan's been playing with the mast again. New dinghy anchor. New dinghy anchor. No. So what were you doing with that today? Getting it off. I need to try and um, press this one out. Get this out. Then we can put it on the new mast and have um, two uh, aluminium rollers instead of these plastic ones. I'm like, I, I'll be honest. I know I'm being like a tad bit unprofessional with this, but I'm not a professional, so I think that's okay. Found a random block of wood. Going to use that as the sanding block. I'm going to start with 400 grit. If anyone sees anything I'm doing wrong, feel free to put it in the comments. As I have heard Trent and Tynan say before, this is a sailing community, not a sailing court. And I am more than happy to learn how to get better at this. Mm. 
When I was looking online, the guy said, don't go back and forward in straight lines. You want to change directions diagonally. No, I think I might put something in this hole. This hole here goes into the dive locker underneath, which also has a few scratches that need to be addressed. Looks like someone's hit it with something. So, um, rather than make a big mess, I'm just going to tape it and go from there. I think you can already see I've kind of knocked off a fair bit. I am actually super happy with the top right now. Still on the um, 600 grit. So now I'm going to try and do the face of it and the curve. So I just shaped with tightening because I had like in my head how I wanted to do the curve, but that kind of like this tight of a curve was not in the YouTube video. So I asked if Nino had ever showed him anything because Nino was a finisher who was out here last year and he's highly skilled. And apparently he used the block and then finished by hand. And that was kind of what I was thinking and trying to do. So I'm on the right track. To be honest, I got so into that just then that I went up through the grits and didn't film any of it, but I'm so happy with how this turned out. Like, this is the area now, that little dip you can see, that's a repair, but um, Tynan said it looks like that because it has shrunk in and usually we would add more gel coat and sand it back again, but because this is a joining surface, it's just not a big deal. So, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good for a 20 minute YouTube tutorial and a one second question. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them. After what I believe was a resounding success on my first attempt, I decided that my next project should be something that is quite complicated with a lot of different angles and shapes so that I could really practice on something tricky but also something that was easily redoable if I was to make a mistake and the thing that I chose to do was this this is going to be the fishing rod holders for our rear cockpit they are made of marine ply and were shaped by Tynan who among other things has outstanding carpentry skills honed from I think almost 10 years in the industry these are going to be gel coated by Tynan because he has practiced applying gel coat and then I am going to take over and try and finish them. Uh, I've just cut these out of some 18 mil marine ply. I um, spent a while making one and getting all of the shapes correct and smooth and then I just used a router with a bearing to cut off and then just basically as a, as a guide to get them all exact same and then I've just sealed them with some resin so I've made a bunch of spares just in case we ever decide to hang them anywhere else around the boat or somebody needs them uh, I've just started gelling them with some white gel coat I've already done a few coats but for now it's just um this is the third coat I'm going to do five five coats of gel and then the last coat, the fifth coat, will have the sanding aid in it uh, just to make sure that it cures off because without the sanding aid it stays tacky so it dry hard and it just makes like a layer across the top of the gel to seal it from air and then it cures hard. Once um, you've added the catalyst it's um it's pretty quick to start to kick off, especially if you're in a hot climate. So um, you have to be pretty quick getting it on. Obviously the less catalyst you put in, the slower it will um, go, go off, queue up. But um, I'm a millennial, so. No attention span. Me what now? <laughs> uh, the previous coat I went um, up and down. So you can see it on the other ones. So now this next coat I'm going long ways. Just 
to um, if you do it all in one direction, you will have deeper and deeper brush marks. And when you're trying to sand it flat, you'll always have like a line in it. These are all dry now, so I'm going to start trying to finish off the gel coat. So when you have a look at it, you can see there's just one side's needed and the other, but just the way the gel coat went and you know the different shapes, it makes it hard to paint on. So I'm going to have to knock back quite a bit to get it flat. I think the lowest one I've got here is 150, which is quite like a coarse one, much coarser than I would do like up on the boat. But I just think it's going to be necessary for this. And then from there, I'm going to go 150, 220, and then I think I'll jump up to 400 and see how it goes. And then 400, 800, stop somewhere around 1200, and we'll have a look then at how it blends in up the top because where it's going to get installed isn't super shiny gel coat it's like kind of a matte finish so we'll see how it goes it's kind of like a bit hot though so i'm thinking i will go set up outside should be a spot in the shade where i'll get a nice bit of a, a breeze without that direct sun you can see right now so yeah i think this will work nicely so I've just covered my little workbench with um, a bin liner and that should help stop any sand or grit getting into it while I'm trying to do this. I'm gonna go like, I'm gonna do the diagonal thing again like I saw on the video, so like that way and then that way. I don't think I'll be on this grit for very long, but we'll see. I am wet sanding, so I've got my little bottle that we bought in Italy, which has been awesome. And I'm just gonna keep chugging away at it. <laughs> I can hear Trent playing um, the saxophone song from Eurovision upstairs. I heard you pump up some upstairs. You know where the new canisting bits went that I ordered? Yes. <laughs> They're upstairs in a bag that's on. They're upstairs in a bag called Lock. Trent just kind of busted in on what I was doing and tried to take over my bench. But what he's working on is this. And this is going to be part of a custom lock he's designed that will go on our saloon sliding door. So we're still in the phase of trying to actually make it, but once we get it all together and we get it working, we can share how we did it because um, I think it's quite a valuable thing for people to be able to have made if they want it for their cats. made my way up the grits as far as 600 so far but what I'm going to do now is dry sand it and I'm going to use a pencil a lead pencil to show me where the low spots are so because I'm doing that I'm gonna wear a mask now uh, wet sanding I was avoiding that but now because I want to do the lead pencil kind of have to put one on so I'll do that for I think I'm up to 600 and uh, we'll go from there That's what it looks like now. So the next job is to go through and sand all of that off. With again, the idea being that anywhere where there is the graphite pencil left, it's a low spot and I need to go back and address that. So, time to get to it. This is, the, I think this will be the last thing I do today before I head off because it's just about time to take Rose for a run. Already you can see the sections where it's come off. So yeah, that's what I'm aiming for. Yes! Yes! Best day ever since last time! Oh, Yay! Yeah, it's Tish! It's Tish! And... Ah, careful! 
so rude. <laughs> Baby is a punch. There's no lead left at all because it's completely flat. Whereas if you look up here, you got white and lead. And same here, there's white and lead. And that just means that there is the height's uneven over here. So this is kind of the area I need to focus on rather than down the bottom where it's looking quite good. And it's sort of similar situation on the other side, only it's kind of running across. So. <sighs> I'm getting there. This will be like a um this will be like a two-day project though. So I just gonna do a little bit more and then I'm gonna go for a run. Because it's kind of like that really nice time of the day to take Rose out. Today I'm going to start with the 600 and work my way up uh, to at least 1500. I am going to have to stop at some point because I don't have an electric polisher at the moment. Um, but if I can get to even 1500 I'll be pretty happy. So let's see how it goes. I have been told that from I have 800 I need to be wet sanding all the time. But to start off, I'm just going to do a little bit of a dry sand because I've got my mask. Over the next two days, I continued working on my fishing rod holders on and off, just slowly getting used to how much gel coat each grit would take off and what was the most appropriate tools to use to shape the overall piece. So I've kind of done this on and off for two days now. This is the third day. And um, I think my takeaway is that finishing gel coat is not necessarily something that you have to have a bit of an eye for it, but the main thing you have to have is patience. You don't want to rush it, cut through all the gel coat and then have to start again. But I think I'll be able to get this done. It's just going to be a uh, labor of love that gets done over time but I am really proud of how it's looking at the moment um, and I think it's just proof that like when you're living on a boat if you have that positive can-do attitude there is a lot around a boat that you can learn to do yourself I had no idea about gel coat before I moved on this boat and now I'm teaching myself through YouTube and advice from a friend on how to do it. And I'm pretty proud of myself with the result there. Would I tackle the bows? No, definitely don't have that level of expertise. But for projects like this that are, you know, cosmetic but we can forgive little things, or once we actually get underway if there's any gel coat repairs, I feel relatively confident that we can handle that. And that's something I really like given our remote area cruising plans. This is where I started and this is where I am.